Halo fans recognize the similarities between the Helldivers and also the ODSTs from Halo. Well, apparently something like Helldivers was pitched at 343 back in the day. A popular Twitch streamer, Ubernick, which I'm sure many of you know, made a tweet talking about if Helldivers 2 was like a Halo kind of thing. It would be really fun to fight against like Flood, and per Banished, and Prometheans. A former developer at 343 did tweet that's now recently deleted showcasing like the spongebob waiting with like the coffee meme and then another former developer just kind of going like oh um yeah about that and then yeah basically speaking in code saying like it seemed like there was some type of mode that was based off odsts or some similar mode that hell divers provides potentially happening within halo which as a halo fan i see this and like, man just more cut potential that would have happened that could have been amazing that obviously us Halo fans don't get. The head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, responds to the insane popularity Helldivers 2 is currently experiencing right now. Why does that matter? Well, Helldivers 2 can all be played on PC and PlayStation. It's nowhere on Xbox. And this response comes hot off of the heels of the recent podcast that we covered on the channel here, where Phil Spencer and team discuss about the future business model of Xbox and how some titles, which he didn't mention directly, will be coming to other platforms, most likely PlayStation and Switch. Those titles likely being Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded. So with exclusivity being a hot topic within the Xbox community, what did Phil have to say about this game which is blowing up being on PlayStation and not Xbox? I will say when I look at a game like Helldivers 2 and it's a great game, kudos to the team shipping on PC and PlayStation. I'm not exactly sure who it helps in the industry by not being on Xbox. If you try to twist yourself to say like somehow that's benefited somebody somewhere. But I get it. There's a legacy in console gaming that we're going to benefit by shipping games and not putting them on other places. We do the same thing. And when I say Helldivers 2 is blowing up, it really is guys. Like it's still growing, which is insane. Right now that they has a peak all time player count of 330,000 players people playing right now this is 12 a.m on a sunday and there's over 278,000 people playing the game right now and those numbers are on steam alone having the game on pc certainly does help a lot when it comes to reaching out to a larger audience if this game was strictly on playstation i don't think we'd be seeing such a huge buzz about hell divers 2 right now part of the success of hell divers 2 also has to be the release window right it's in the early of february not a whole lot of big games are releasing at that time so it has games like Hell Divers 2 getting a chance to get the spotlight that people jump in and play it because we're getting a little fatigued from all the holiday release windowed games. How World released about a month ago and people have jumped in and played a good amount of that. Might be trying to see if there's anything else. Hell Divers 2 comes out and people are loving it. Honestly, this could be a sign of the fall release time framing that we see usually when it comes to gaming is becoming eroded more and more. For example, I tweeted this out today saying that like Power World, like I said, released on the 19th in January. Hell Divers 2 released back on the 8th of February. Last year, Baldur's Gate 3 released on August 3rd and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom released on May 12th. These are all incredibly high selling games. Even Hogwarts Legacy released in February 10th back in 2023 ended up being the best selling game of 2023. Back on the topic of Xbox and exclusivity, Phil Spencer mentioned in the recent podcast saying that it's a fundamental belief that over the next five or 10 years, exclusive games tied to one piece of hardware are going to be smaller and smaller part of the game industry. That's not some great insight because if you look at the last 10 years and what the biggest games are today, it's a neutral place. Whether it's one console and PC, multiple consoles and PC, mobile console and PC, you see big games landing on multiple platforms and we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. Phil Spencer and team mentioned multiple times of how they want these studios to come over to Xbox and show like, hey, you can get your game out to as many platforms as possible just to get the word out there and how the biggest games are on Xbox. And I would say that Phil and team are kind of on the right track where you look at the most popular games out there, most of them are on multiple platforms. And we know that when it comes to hardware for the Xbox 
and PlayStation, they actually lose money on each sale. But the big thing is to try to get players into the ecosystem. And that's where you make the money from. So on the other hand, Phil Spencer within that podcast still confirmed that games like Starfield and Indiana Jones are not going to be coming to other platforms. They're going to be Xbox exclusive. So it seems like they're in the middle of a transitional period at the moment where they're trying to have more games available on more platforms. But maybe the, what they might be doing moving forward is timed exclusivity. Popular media website The Verge talks about Microsoft ways in launching Indiana Jones on the PlayStation 5. Saying while Bethesda will launch its Indiana Jones game first as an Xbox console exclusive, it's currently set to have a rather short period of exclusivity, we're told. A release for PlayStation 5 is being considered for months later, with Bethesda tentatively targeting a December 2024 launch for the Xbox and PC versions of the Indiana Jones game. And like we showed earlier in this video with the four games that are coming over to other platforms, they've been out on Xbox for quite some time. So timed exclusivity might really be a thing moving forward when it comes to the Xbox brand and the content that's gonna be coming on that platform. Because we know for sure that Game Pass is not going anywhere, it's staying on the Xbox platform, which would be the move I would make as well. But of course, once we get some more information, I'll share with you guys here on the channel.